This is my story of how, as a young filmmaker, I became caught up in a nightmare that would rob years of my life. With my video camera, I was trying to protect some of the world's oldest forests. But I threatened the interests of a billion dollar logging corporation. That company, Guns Limited, was determined to shut down free speech. It sued me and 19 others for millions of dollars. We became known as the Guns 20. I was at risk of losing everything. It's only now that I can go back to Tasmania to try and make sense of how I became Defendant 5. This is me, Heidi. My parents were teachers who loved travelling. So every school holidays, they'd pack us kids up to go on their shoestring adventures. We camped around Australia and backpacked throughout Asia. Travel opened my eyes to inequality. As a teenager, I picked up a video camera and making films became my passion. I went to Tasmania when I was 23 to make a film about the island's ancient forests that were threatened by logging. <laughs> you seen the trees as big? Yeah, well, I would consider these the last of the giants of the North East. And you come here and you still hold out some hope. But when you go to this in the early stages of logging with the machinery there, that's the really heartbreaking thing of it. That's the loggers' future that they're carting away. Their sons, their grandsons' jobs, they're carting them down the road every day. These were some of the oldest trees on earth, and it broke my heart to see them being logged and turned into wood chips to be shipped to Japan to make paper. I documented the effects the logging was having on the community. If the wind blows, it blows all the sawdust directly into Burnie, and all the residents in Burnie have been complaining for years and years and years about not only breathing the dust in, but how ill they've been. I wanted to use my camera to help protect the forests. I never imagined my films would get me and others into serious trouble. There was one company profiting most from the destruction of the forests, guns the biggest wood chip company in the Southern Hemisphere. Guns was 80% of the entire native forest sector in Tasmania, trashing five million tonnes, primarily of old growth forest. Every log truck on the road, every bit of polluted watercourse, every scalped hill, every 1080 poison disaster, it all came back to guns. Mill, which is the largest wood chip mill on the southern hemisphere. Hey, sir, how are you going this morning? All right, don't touch any of that gear. Mark Trespassing, Protesters locked themselves onto machinery to shut guns down. As the camera
campaign escalated, I crossed a line from filmmaker to activist. You are unable to want to leave. The gentleman will escort you. Okay. Can I just sir? get your um, name and number, please, yes. for our legal record? Sergeant Tustin, 568. My footage was broadcast on the news. My little video camera defied this giant corporation, exposing the truth and showing how far people were willing to go to stand up for what they believed in. The Wilderness Society, a leading Australian environmental organisation, hired me to make films for them. So much of our campaigning had become very kind of fact-based. We desperately needed something that would portray the emotion of the campaign and the material that you introduced in the form of that beautiful little film suddenly actually made the emotion very present. Once the forests were cleared, Poison was used to kill native wildlife. The impact of those was quite profound. You'd go into a meeting anywhere in the world, and I used them all over the world, and after seven minutes, they'd be shocked and saying, wow, this is a big problem. What do I have to do to help? Support for Tasmania's forests spread across Australia and around the world. over logging was a major political issue. And looking back now, I naively underestimated Gunn's reaction. Just before Christmas, a strange man in black appeared at my office with a shocking delivery. Myself and 19 others were being sued by guns for six and a half million dollars. They claimed we were in a conspiracy to destroy their company. We became known as the Guns 20. I will now ask to come before us the Guns 20, as they are named in the Guns Writ, Alexander Maher, Beth Defender, Heidi Douglas. I'll never forget that day because my life was changing and I had no control over it anymore. And that feeling of stepping up there in front of the community and suddenly I was a player in this massive chess game, you know, between an almighty powerful corporation and really a bunch of community members who'd been standing up for their backyards. The Guns 20 defendants were a disparate group. Campaigners, elected politicians, students, doctors, a writer, and a dentist. We all cared about the forests, but Guns claimed we were working together to deliberately undermine their business. The way guns had framed their case. There was a charge that there was this overall campaign against guns and that everybody had conspired 
to harm their business. And the conspiracy consisted largely of the campaign to protect Tasmania's forests, so that anybody who was involved in that campaign was potentially a co-conspirator. They'd come together to form this plan, which we might have said was about saving the forest, but in the pleadings it became this plan to injure Gunn's business. And that was a very scary precedent for free speech because it criminalised the practice of democracy. If they could get away with this, they would build a new body of case law in Australia which would allow similar companies to go after any civil society action that got in their way. Why do you think I personally was sued? The case was fundamentally about silencing dissent and trying to weaken the campaign. Um, what was one of the most powerful new campaign tools that needed to disappear? Yeah, they were your films. Only four days after we were sued, it became clear why Guns was out to silence us. The company announced plans to build a giant pulp mill in the Tamar Valley. This would double Guns' woodchip production. Guns claimed this was an industrial zone. It doesn't look very industrial. No, it doesn't look very industrial. And that's why we feel so insulted with all this. I just have to come here and see how beautiful it is to know that. The mill was fiercely opposed by people who feared it would pollute the region beyond repair. This was a billion dollar plus company whose share price had gone up every year for the previous four years. So they just thought it was going to keep going up and all they had to do was stomp on a few people build the biggest pulp mill in Tasmania and then lock the entire Tasmanian economy into making them rich. Before I was sued, I'd been planning to buy my first home. My lawyers advised me that if I lost this court case, guns could take everything I owned. I refused to give up my dreams and went ahead and bought the flat anyway. <laughs> 